Welcome back to our basic class today. So in today's video, we are looking at group frequency distribution. What is group frequency distribution? This is a set of all class interval for the variable that's continuous together with the associated frequencies. We are saying that with group frequency distribution, this is a set of class interval for the variable that's continuous together with the associated frequencies. So class interval. Realize that we, for the ungroup data, we say this a set of what a variables or data set which is what a discrete together with the associated word frequency but here it is what a continuous word variable because of what the class interval so here the variables are in what classes but when it comes to group the variables are not in class so therefore we have what a discrete word variable but when it comes to group frequency we have what a continuous variable because the data set or the frequency are within what classes so let's be guided about this and together with the associated what frequencies okay so these are some of the terms that we need to look at when it comes to group frequency distribution so first of all start with what class interval what is a class interval we are saying that class interval is it is a subdivision of the total range of values a variable that's a continuous may what take it is a subdivision of the total range of values a variable which you call continuous may take for example, the groups into which the values are put are called the class. I mean, that's what we are talking about. So, for example, I have 41. We are saying this is a subdivision. So, we have a number of classes within a group frequency. But if you take one, that becomes what a subdivision of the total classes that we have for that particular group frequency. Is that okay? So, for example, you have 41 to 49. It is what a class interval having an a lower limit of what 41 and upper limit of what 49 likewise 50 and 59 is also a class interval within a particular group frequency distribution in which the 50 is a lower limit and the 59 is what the upper limit so this is why we call it class interval so if i have if i have 20 to let's say 30 this also can be called a class interval because at this point the frequencies are within what a class so the 20 is the lower class limit right the lower class limit and then 30 is the upper class limit so let's be guided about that and then the range starts from 20 to 30 so this is what we call a group sorry a class interval a class interval so let's take note of that and then we have also a class limit. I think I've defined class limit in the class interval. So the class limits are basically the ending point of what the class interval. So the class limit, these are the ending points of the class interval. The ending point, so we realize that with 41, the ending point was what? 41 to 49. The ending point was 49, and then the beginning point was what? 41. So we have the ending point so at the start and at the end. So the end end numbers 41 and 50. So here this set of class the ending numbers which is what 50 okay let's go for it. the end number is what 41 and then 50 are called the lower class i think i've already explained the lower class limit which is what 41 and then the 50 right but then the upper class limit going to be what 49 and then 50 this is what we call a class what limits these are the ending points of a class or interval so taking my example that i formed here that we have 20 to what 30 i can say that the 20 here is my beginning limit which is what the lower class limit and then the 30 here is my upper class limit in so that is class interval that is class limit let's move on class frequency what is class frequency class frequency it is a number of variables which fall in a given interval let me give you some classical example here let's say we have the same 41 at the top here with 49 here if let's say within the interval the frequency that falls within this is say five then we can say that the frequency or the class frequency in a class interval of 41 to 49 is what five so this five that we call the class frequency so class frequency it is a number of variables which fall in a given what interval so let's take note of that so if i have 
my example that I've been using 20 to 30 and let's say the class frequency is say 4 then I can say that the frequency 4 is the variable that falls within the class interval 20 and what 30 so let's take note of that so that is a class frequency we are talking about the frequency that falls within a given class interval so let's take note of that then we move on to class boundary what is a class boundary? so class boundary we are saying that these are the lower and the upper values of a class that mark a common point between the class these are the lower and the upper class values of a class that mark a common point between the class what do you mean by the common point here let's say we have an example here let's say i have let's say from 20 to 30 is that okay and let's say from 31 to say 40 and let's say from 41 to let's say 50 these are my class interval now for, for me to know my class band we are saying that these are lower and the upper class these are the lower and the upper values of a class that mark a common point between the classes so the common point between the classes here is a value that should be equal to both class interval that we have here so how do we get that common point in here so to get your class boundary we are saying that first of all take into account the upper class limit of the first class or the upper class limit of the first class yes and subtract that from the lower class limit of the next class to get your common point here we are saying that first of all take your upper class limit of the first class and then subtract from the lower class limit or the lower class limit of the second class so what do i mean by this let's say i'll first of all pick my upper class limit of the first class which is what 20 and what 30 right so here the upper class is going to be 30 and i'll subtract the 30 from what the 31 here so it should be 31 minus what 30 and that should fetch me what one is that okay so that's going to be the common point but then to get exact common point i will mark between one class as against another after subtracting the first upper class limit of the first class from the next or the second class interval up lower class limit the next thing is to divide the result by what so, so we're going to divide one by what two and that should fetch me what 0 0.5 that should fetch me 0 0.5 is that okay so once you get a 0 0.5 for us to get our class boundary then let's say i want to get a class boundary for what 20 and or 30 to do that my class boundary in this case all that i need to do is to add 0 0.5 to the upper class limit of what 20 the class interval of 20 which is what 30 and then subtract 0 0.5 from the lower class limit of what 20. so once you get that you subtract what the 0 0.5 from the lower class which is 20 and then add 0 0.5 to the upper class which is what 30 here so i can say that here if i subtract 0 0.5 from 20 i'm going to get what 19.5 and then if i add 0 0.5 30, i'm going to get what 30.5 so that is how we get our class boundary for the first class interval let's say i want to get for the second class interval here so the same approach you don't you don't, you don't want to start from 30 and the first class limit and the second class limit let's say i want to determine my common point so here let's say i'll pick my i'll pick the second class in which is 40 the upper class limit of what the second class interval which is what 40 and i'll subtract from 41 which is the next class of the lower class limit so that's going to still going to fetch you what one because when you subtract 40 from 40 i'm going to fetch you what one and you divide by it you still get what 0 0.5 so whatever you do at the end of the day it should be what 0 0.5 at the end of the day depends on what the range you should be able to get what a common value that you should add and then subtract so once you get that common point you subtract from the lower class limit of a particular class i want to find a class boundary and you add to the upper class limit of that particular class you want to find the class boundary. so interested in finding the class boundary for 
20 and 30. So realize that here we subtract 0 0.5 from 20 and add 0 0.5 there, and that will fetch us what our class boundary. And in that, the 19.5 is going to be the lower class boundary, right? And then the 30 here, 30.5 is going to be our upper class what boundary. So this is how we find the class boundary of any given point or of any given class interval. Take note of that. So let's be get it about that. So to find the class boundary, as we have already indicated, we subtract the upper class limit of the first class, upper class limit of the first class from the lower class limit of the second class. I think I've already talked about this. And we divide the result by two. And then we, sub we then subtract 0 0.5 from the lower class limit and then add to 0 0.5 to call the upper class limit to obtain the lower class boundary and the upper class boundary respectively. I think I've talked about this. So let's move on. Hence, Simply, it is dividing the line between any two given successive word classes. I mean, another way to go by, and then that's refresh you that in that case. So let's move on to the next. We also have what we call a class size. What is a class size? Now, a class size is the difference between the upper class and then the lower class boundary of a class interval. Is that okay? So you are talking about what the difference between the upper and then the lower class boundary of a class what interval now let's say we're having our class interval of 20 to what 30 is that okay and realize that the class boundary for this class is going to be what 19.5 to 30.5 so now to get my class size it is a difference between the upper class and then lower class boundary of that class interval which is what 20 and what 30 is that okay so to get that you find the difference between 30.5 and then 19.5 so here will fetch me zero making here so we add one making here 10 so we're gonna fetch me what one here is that okay and then here will fetch me what here we are left with what two so we're gonna fetch me what one so you can clearly see that the class size of a class band which is what 19.5 to 30.5 of a class interval of 20 to 30 is what 11 exactly 11.0 so to find the class size is it the difference between the upper class boundary and then the lower class the difference just find the difference that you are good to go in that case so let's take note of that so as i've already indicated class size the upper class boundary minus the lower class boundary so and then you are good to go in that case so let's take note of that they also have what we call a class word mark class mark we also call it what a class midpoint what is a class mark or a class midpoint we are saying that it is obtained by adding the lower and then the upper class limits and then divide the result by two you can also obtain it by first also taking into account the by adding the lower class and the upper class boundaries of a class and then divide the result by two going to fetch you the same thing as you adding the lower and the upper class limit of a particular class interval and then divided by what two is that okay so it is a midpoint of what the class interval so actually class my we are talking about class midpoint of a class interval so to obtain that all that we need to do in this case where we're having a class interval of 20 to 30 yeah where we're having their class boundary to be 19.5 and then 30.5 to obtain a class mark, all that we need to do is to say 20 plus or 30 and then divided by 2 or 19.5 plus 30.5 and then divide the result by what? 2. Whatever you're going to get is going to be your class midpoint or your class mark for a particular set of data. So let's take note of that. Let's take note of that. So that is a class mark in that regard. So this is where we bring an end to group frequency distribution and the associated terms in this case. So in our next video, we are going to take a question on how to solve a group frequency distribution question and then explain much more details about. So thank you for watching this video. So if this video was really helpful to you, please go ahead to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and subscribe to the channel. So that by this once you go live or release any updates you're able to get it right out so please like this video for me 
and then share it as well. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next session. Bye-bye.